Each year in the United States, thousands of major crimes go unsolved. When the case has gone cold and police have nowhere to turn, they seek assistance from the public. This is a program dedicated to solving these cases. This is Crime Stoppers Case Files. Welcome to Crime Stoppers Miami. I'm Dick Maston, the director of Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. The purpose of this program is to share unsolved cases with as many South Florida viewers as possible, empowering you to do something about the violence on our streets. Every case we feature is unsolved. Every case we feature has a cash reward available. In other words, every case we feature is an opportunity for you to help your city and at the same time earn Crime Stoppers cash without even giving your name. Well, let's get started. On January 13th, 2002, 28-year-old Jason Norris, a successful music producer, was brutally gunned down at a Miami Beach gas station. Here are the facts of the case. On Sunday, January 13th, 2002, at approximately 4.45 a.m. in the morning in South Beach, in the city of Miami Beach, Jason Norris was shot and killed at the Amico gas station located at 945 Fifth Street. The incident originally occurred at the Amago gas station, which was its name back in 2002, but today's date it's actually the BP gas station. South Beach is located within Miami Beach. It's kind of like our entertainment district. Uh, Jason Norris was known to be a uh, promoter. Also, he owned a record label called High and Mighty and would frequent South Beach. Uh, Jason lived a lavish lifestyle. Uh, he had uh, the finest of cars, uh, partied a lot in South Beach. Uh, like I said, he owned a couple of record labels. He also was survived by his two parents of Jamaican descent. So Jason was well known within the South Beach area. At approximately 4.30 a.m. on that Sunday night, Jason and a couple of friends had gone to Club Goddess in the 600 block of Washington Avenue. They left the club a little bit after 4.30. They made a U-turn on 7th and Washington and drove westbound on 5th Street and entered the Amical gas station at 945 5th Street. So Jason was driving with his passenger and he pulls into the north side, the rear of the gas station. Um, the passenger of the car gets out of the car and starts to walk toward the convenience store. And just about the time that he reaches the door to the convenience store, someone comes up to the driver's side door to where Jason was and he shot multiple times. Just after the friend heard the shots, he turned around and saw what had happened and then took off running away from the gas station in the opposite direction. The car at that point drifts forward a couple of feet because Jason's foot is actually on the brake and it glides a couple more feet and then the car stops. Jason Norris lived the good life on South Beach. Nice house, expensive car, but it all ended for the 28-year-old entrepreneur with several bullets to the head. Some witnesses were putting gas at the gas station, the Amico station at 945 Fifth Street, heard some gunshots, called 911. Police were called to this Amico on Fifth Street about 445 Sunday morning in response to shots fired. When they arrived, they spotted a black Mercedes parked in the back. When officers arrived, they find this black Mercedes CLK 430 with the driver still in it with a gunshot dead on the scene with his foot still on the brake. A short time before his murder, Jason Norris was seen inside Club Cristal, located about a block from the gas station where his body was found. Norris lived in this house in the exclusive Sunset Islands neighborhood. Neighbors tell us he moved in just a few months ago, soon after installed this security gate, even hired a bodyguard. Neighbors also tell us cars full of people would come in and out of here on a regular basis. Tonight, Norris's home stands deserted. Only the detectives are left behind, armed with surveillance video shot at the scene. It's now their job to find out whoever is responsible for this violent killing. In reviewing the surveillance video, we saw that approximately 10 minutes prior to the shooting, there's a suspect pacing back and forth, almost waiting for Jason and his car to pull up. The person comes up to the driver's side door to where Jason was, either gets his attention somehow, and it appears that Jason looked over to the person shooting and he shot multiple times. It is believed that right after the shooting, the suspect doubled back over to Michigan Avenue and headed north on Michigan, and that's the last they saw. It appears to be a premeditated 
crime. It wasn't a robbery. His jewelry, his watch, and everything was still on him. The only subject description we have on here from the video is it would appear to be a black male wearing a hoodie, a dark hoodie, dark clothing, just seen walking in the area. Being that time of night at 4.40 in the morning, most of the clubs were letting out, so the gas station was pretty busy, although we really had very few leads and very few witnesses that came forward that night. So we're asking if anybody has information on this crime or was there or has any information to call the Miami Beach Police Department at 305-673-7945 or the Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. In the case of Jason Norris, detectives have very little information on the description of the suspect. They're looking for a black male who was seen on a surveillance video wearing dark pants and a dark hooded sweatshirt. If you have any information on this suspect that can help police, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Coming up, you'll learn about the June 2010 murder of Vincent James McCoy. He was killed at Northwest 9th Place in Miami Gardens. When we return on Crime Stoppers Case Files. In 1975, the first Crime Stoppers organization was formed by a detective who believed media attention helped solve cases. Since then, thousands of Crime Stoppers organizations have been formed around the globe with the same mission, encouraging members of the public to stand up against crime. Every 14 minutes, Crime Stoppers help solve a crime somewhere in the world. Get involved. Contact your Crime Stoppers organization and learn how you can help. Leave a tip, crimestoppers1.com. On June 10th, 2010, 24-year-old Vincent James McCoy was hanging out with some of his friends in their Miami Gardens apartment when a random bullet came through the door killing Vincent James. Here's the story. Well, when he was born, he was, he was a happy little boy, and then he grew up, and he had nine brothers, six sisters. My mom had 53 grands, and he had raised most of them, and he was very good with kids. He was a nice person. He get along with everybody. Everybody loved him. He took care of our kids like they was his. And he was a very outstanding person, a happy person. Well, his nickname was Bob. It, you know, his real name was Vincent. And we named him Bob when he was small because he was real boppy like You know, he just couldn't be still. He played football. I put him in to play football at the age of five when he was going to school. And then he played football till he was like 19. He made everybody laugh. And he was good in football. When he played football for Liberty City Park, he started off at 65 pounds. I was there every game with him, protecting him, to see what the coaches needed out of him. But he was very, very good. So he played him and his other twin brother, they played at the same team for many years. He just was a good boy and he didn't bother with no one. He had a lot of friends and he did things for people that usual other people wouldn't do. He was 24 and when he got killed, you know, a lot of his brothers and sisters had a hard time. And the night that he got killed, I already had knew that he was going to get killed at the place where he got killed at. I just had a feeling, you know, like about a week before this happened, I seen him get hurt at this place where he was at because this was a lot of his friends that he always would go to every day and every night. Miami State Police and Fire, what's the address of your emergency? 17130 on Mount West 9 Clear. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. My son's friend went inside the room. He got shot. Got shot. Okay, ah! stay with me on the line, okay? Oh my God! Did anyone see who did this, ma'am? I don't know. You don't know? Where is he shot? What part of the body is shot? I don't need his word. Is he awake? He is. He is awake? Okay, is he breathing? Is, he's breathing, but he's running, running. Hold on, Bob, take it easy. Stay with me on the line. We have help on the way there, okay? On June 10th, 2010, at approximately 11.15 p.m., 
Miami Gardens Police Department officials responded to 17130 Northwest 9th Place reference of black male who was shot. Upon arrival, units along with fire rescue here in Miami-Dade County found a black male by the name of Vincent James McCoy in the Southwest bedroom, deceased. During the investigation, it was learned that Mr. Vincent James McCoy was visiting friends at the residence located in Miami Gardens. They were watching a basketball game that was televised that evening. At some point during the evening, a phone call was made and Mr. McCoy got up. As Mr. McCoy got up from where he was watching the, the basketball game, he approached the front door. And at that time, three shots rang out and one of those three shots struck Mr. McCoy in the chest. There were individuals inside the residence when this gunshot was sustained and individuals then fled the residence along with other individuals who were outside. After sustaining that gunshot wound to the chest, Mr. McCoy stumbled throughout the residence and ended up collapsing in a rear bedroom. Mr. McCoy was pronounced deceased on the scene by Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. One of my sons called me and said that, uh, you heard that Bob got shot? He said, uh, yeah, they say he got shot and he did. And I said, no, it can't be. Then they said that he got shot by mistake. So they was trying to shoot at somebody else. Uh, so there was a lot of things heard about why he got shot and what happened. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers Miami. I'm Dick Maston. We now return to the case of Vincent James McCoy. On June 10th, 2010, at approximately 11.15 p.m., Vincent James McCoy sustained a single gunshot wound to the chest. Uh, Mr. McCoy stood up after receiving a phone call and started walking towards the front door. After receiving that phone call, there were three shots fired into that residence front door, and one of those projectiles struck Mr. McCoy in the chest. After being struck in the chest, Mr. McCoy then stumbled throughout the residence and collapsed in the southwest bedroom. We were able to retrieve video from surveillance cameras at a residence, and it was learned through the investigation that two black males wearing some type of sports apparel, possibly football jerseys, approached the residence. It was learned that there were friends hanging outside the residence and also individuals inside the residence watching the basketball game with Mr. McCoy just prior to him being shot. And one of those black males fired three rounds into the front door. The black males after firing the rounds then fled on foot in an unknown direction. The individuals inside the residence and outside the residence then fled the scene on foot and in vehicles. Mr. McCoy was pronounced deceased on the scene by Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. Well, I was very strange when he died and they found this note in the Bible that he wrote that he was gonna die before his time. I didn't know that he read the Bible like that every day. So he was into God. One of my twins, him and Bob look just alike. And a lot of people get them mixed up and then, you know, everybody gets sad and we lost a lot uh, by him being shot like that. We would be better off if we find the killer that killed my brother because he was a good person, but like the detective say, he was at the wrong place and at the wrong time. And I hope we find the killer. That's why a lot of crimes never get solved because a lot of people are scared to talk. They don't want to say anything. I don't know why they're afraid. They know who, who was there. I would let the police know because that would stop that person. He might go out and kill somebody else, mess up somebody else's family. And uh, that's not right. The Miami Gardens Police Department officials, along with myself, is requesting the public's assistance in this matter. We're hoping that somebody saw or observed the individuals flee from the scene and can provide additional information. If anyone has any additional information, please contact the Miami Gardens Police Department at 305-474-1622 or myself, Detective Zellner, at Miami Gardens Police Department, 561-236. 8600, or if you'd like to remain anonymous, please contact Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS.
and once again, your tip will remain anonymous. In the case of the murder of Vincent James McCoy, police are looking for two black males who may live near where the incident occurred. If you know anything about this case, call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. You'll remain anonymous and be eligible for a cash reward. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers Case Files. It's been proven that programs such as ours usually solve crimes after several airings of a case. With that in mind, we'd like to quickly review a few cases we featured on past episodes. On November the 14th, 2010, 20-year-old Michael Beatty II, known by his friends as Bam, was targeted by a killer with a machine gun outside of a convenience store at 59th Street and Northwest 15th Avenue. On November 14th, 2010, at approximately 12.03 in the afternoon, our victim, Mr. Michael J. Beatty II, was hanging out in front of the corner store on Northwest 15th Avenue and 59th Street. The CCTV, or the surveillance camera for the store, captured the entire scene on video. The first thing you're gonna see is the victim. The victim standing or hanging out in front of the store, which is known to do so. Typical 20-year-old, that's where all his friends hang out. That's where they spend most of their afternoon. The second thing you're gonna see is a black 1999 Nissan Maxima approach the intersection. There's about five or six people that are exiting the store, males, females, a variety of ages, who are oblivious to this car. The black Nissan Maxima pulled up in front of the store. A masked individual stepped out of the passenger side of the car, approached the victim who was hanging out in front of the store, and immediately opened up on him with a Mac-10. The crowd disperses, leaving only our victim behind. The victim ran off, the offender immediately began to run after the victim. Our victim ran around the store. The suspect followed, continuing to shoot. The victim ran around to the back side of the store. Again, our offender gave chase. The chase ended up about a block and a half away, where the victim finally collapsed to the floor, dying his last breath. The offender approached the victim, emptied out the rest of his clip onto the victim, got into the black car, and the car flees eastbound on 58th Street. We have information that there were obviously two people involved. We have the driver, which we have no information on, and the shooter. The shooter is approximately six feet tall, slender, black male, dreadlocks, wearing all black, white gloves, and uh, some kind of scarfing or, or knit material covering his face. The vehicle that we're looking for is a 1999 black Nissan Maxima. It had a spoiler in the back and a wind protector visor on top of the roof. What we're looking for is that magic phone call for somebody to call in and say, hey, this is what I saw, this is whom I saw, and this is the information that I need to give you. On May 15, 2009, at approximately 11 p.m., Keanthony Evans was ambushed and killed in front of 240 Northwest 21st Street. Mr. Evans was returning to his girlfriend's house, who lives on 22nd Street. Apparently, something caught his attention. Somebody called him over. You check it out. There were a couple of vehicles there waiting for him. The encounter was friendly enough that he looked into the vehicle. Whoever was inside the car shot him in the face, point blank, with a 40 caliber. They shot him in the mouth area. He immediately dropped his bike, ran towards Northwest 2nd Avenue, south to 21st Street. Uh, two vehicles followed him. Uh, he ended up in a building which is 240 Northwest 21st Street. He, in vain, attempted to enter some of the apartments. Nobody allowed him. At that same time, the two suspects who had followed exited their vehicles and began shooting the victim with two to three assault rifles. Both suspects opened fire through the gate. He immediately went down. Uh, one of them entered the atrium and finished uh, Mr. Evans off with his 40 caliber. They both exited the atrium, entered the vehicle, and then fled westbound on 21st Street. What we're looking for are two black males, one short, heavy uh, beard. The other is taller, also with a beard. Uh, the type of vehicles, we believe the first one to be a newer model Ford Edge, silver in color. The second vehicle was a, a smaller, uh, dark-colored vehicle. What I'm asking is for anyone with information to please call my office at 305-603-6350. Ask for Detective T.C. Sapero or my partner, Detective Frankie Sanchez. Now, if you have information on any of these unsolved cases, call Crime Stoppers at 305-471-TIPS. Crime Stoppers of Miami-Dade has one goal, 
to make the streets safer for law-abiding citizens by solving cases and capturing criminals. To learn more about your local Crime Stoppers, become a fan on Facebook or log on to CrimestoppersMiami.com. Now I'm Dick Maston. Be sure to join us next week for another episode of Crime Stoppers Case Files.